Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm making a card today that is the greatest of all time. I have always loved goats, and when I saw Neat and Tangled had this little goat set, I was like, that is the cutest little thing ever. I love this little goat. So I am going to show you the masking that I did. I stacked up the goat on top of my little farmer dude and then picked it up with the Misty because I wanted the farmer to be standing behind him. So he's going to go in the second round of stamping. But I started by just stamping the, the goat first and the sentiment up at the top. And I then took some masking paper. This is a roll of masking paper. It's the stuff that I tend to use unless I just grab a quick sticky note. But for cutting things out, this one works way better. Sticky notes only have sticky on the one side, so this has sticky over the whole thing. They also have tinier rolls, but I don't find they have as much of a sticky feature. So they're a little less sticky, and in the summer heat, I need more sticky. So I've trimmed out this little guy. I've only had to trim out the part that the farmer was going to be behind, so I didn't have to trim out his butt. And I'm aligning the farmer, but I only want to stamp part of the farmer. I don't want to stamp the part that's going to be over the back of the goat. And I did misplace my little post-it note. You'll see I have to stamp that again. But I want to move the hand so the hand is touching the back of the goat. So he's kind of leaning down. But you see I had to move it around so that I could stamp his feet because my sticky note was not in the right place. But with a Misty, that's the awesome part is that you can fix that. So I had to tilt him and stretch him down. His his arm that's on the goat is actually going to be longer than the other arm, but you're not going to notice by the time it's all said and done. I had to really kind of slide it down so that it would actually be touching it. And you can see now from a little closer up view that it's definitely longer, but I think it still works. So the idea that I had for this card, as you saw the, the peak of the card at the beginning of the video, was to have him being in the barn, but when you're telling somebody they're the greatest of all time, you need a spotlight. So I thought having a barn scene, but have a really strong spotlight over these two would be really fun. I've done lots of spotlight cards in the past, lots of Halloween type things. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you'll recognize a lot of this. Did uh, another one with a barn at one time. I don't remember if it was a video or if it was just one that I did on Instagram, because I do a lot more cards on Instagram than I do here on YouTube. But I'm doing the light so it's coming directly from above. So his face has not only the shadow under the chin, but it has a shadow that the cat, it's going to be cast by the hat. So it's going to come down over his head. And even though those skin tone colors that I had used are going to seem really dark, like a BV11 for the dark shadow is too much for some people, it's going to really be muted by the time this is all said and done. Color is relative to what's around it. So I tend to put in more color knowing that I'm going to saturate this whole piece of paper. So I don't really stress out too much about having a lot of color in there. You can already see the skin tone is lightening up as I go because I'm adding more darks in the areas around it. With the light hitting the top of his head, it's going to be the top of his hat that's going to have the light. And the underside of the hat is going to be in shadow. And that's just the way that the light's going to hit. And it was a little bit too, too much, so I took the same light color from the top of the hat, just went over a little bit of that, that dark color to lighten it up a little bit. Gonna give him a little red shirt. I considered giving him a little checkerboard pattern with a white pen, but I decided I just wanted to keep it simple. I didn't even add any shading to that. Then comes the goat, and I love goats. I have a thing for goats. When I used to work at a nonprofit, we, I, one of the projects that I worked on for that nonprofit was our gift catalog. And in the gift catalog, if you've gotten the World Vision gift catalog, we sold goats. And you don't buy the goat and get the goat yourself. You send the goat to someone in need around the world. And so goats were like my thing because, yeah, I was always, I was always like working with the field to request goat pictures and giving them art direction about what kinds of pictures were going to be really helpful for me and producing the catalog and trying to find the child wearing the right kinds of clothing, what kind of thing was going to work for Christmas catalogs versus spring catalogs, etc. So 
yeah, I've had goat things in my history for a very long time as I worked for that charity. And if you ever just want something really fun to give somebody, I would always recommend giving something that goes to someone else. There's a lot of different charities that do that kind of thing, but it means so much more than giving somebody some tchotchke that they're going to re-gift. Because at least this way, the goat's going to go to somebody who can really use it. They can get the milk from it and they can make babies and sell more goats and help more people in their community and all that good stuff. So there's my pitch for buying for charity. I'm a big charitable giving person, if you haven't noticed already. And that's just what I feel passionate about. So there you go. So I'm currently creating the background and I wanted to create that cone of light coming from above and even though i'm going to be adding parts of the barn i want the overall feeling of that light to happen first before i add all of the rest because the barn the poles in the barn and everything are going to go in front of it because they're going to be dark so you're basically just coloring right through it in order to create this background and then you're going to put the rest of the barn up on top so I kept going progressively darker colors, trying to figure out exactly how dark I wanted it to be. And I wanted to keep one step of really, really dark available to me. The E79 is a really nice, super dark color, but I'm reserving that for the posts and the pillars and things so that they're going to be even darker than the colors that are here. So just kind of kept going over and over and over again to try to get those that kind of gradation in there. But the cool thing about adding all of that, the barn stuff, all of the barn poles and everything, is that it's not going to matter if my coloring in the background didn't get completely blended. Because you're going to be looking at the rest of it. You're not really going to be looking at that portion of it. You're going to be focused on the fact that it's a barn and, oh my goodness, how cool is that? And not on whether or not the blending was perfect. And that's one of the things I love about making cards, is that I can draw your attention to something really important. Here the little farmer and the little goat those are the most important things so i put a nice dark shadow below it i have light color behind them or should i say mid-tone behind them if i had completely light color it would have a different effect but i'm creating this whole atmosphere around it a big oval of light so that you get the idea that there's some sort of a spotlight or maybe a, a an open window or something at the top of the barn that's going to cast light down on them and they are in the, the spotlight because they're the greatest of all time. And then I'm going to add a few strokes, just kind of fun marker strokes that are going to indicate that there's hay on the ground. Again, not trying to make it look like every blade of hay or anything. I just wanted to give that overall impression that there's hay. And now I'm going to jump in with not that E79 yet because I wanted to kind of get things set before I did. At this stage, if I didn't like what I was doing, I could jump in there and change that up a little bit. I could add more to the background. But now I'm going in with my E79, that really dark brown. So I'm kind of firming up. This is where I want my lines to be and make them really kind of important and, and keep them really dark. And it started adding in a little bit of details down at the bottom. And then I realized maybe I want a second row of poles and things in the barn. Because it looked too much like a single frame. So I drew them first in a light color so I could kind of get them where I wanted them. And then went over them with a darker color. But not as dark as the ones in the front. So it's going to give me that sense of something being in behind. Because it's not as, not as dark as the ones in the very front. And you get that that depth that's starting to slowly build. And then I can go back in again with the E79 on top of everything, firm up some of those lines that I want to be really, really dark, a little bit more at the bottom, and it's all done. And I love cards like this that I can just put on a card base and not have to embellish and add a lot of other stuff too. I put in a little time on the coloring and had fun doing it and get to send a really beautiful but flat card and I have to pay extra postage to get it out in the mail to someone. So I hope you enjoy this. Maybe learn a little something from it. Maybe you'll be inspired to go buy a goat. I'll leave you a link in the doobly doo in case you have a birthday coming that somebody needs a goat for. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and have an awesome day.